hope that's okay, everybody. Um, turn on or off your cameras accordingly. Um, and Audrey Dahl, would you mind muting yourself? I think I can also mute. Yeah. Just so that it records um, me talking, because right now it's getting a lot of sound from you. There we go. Okay. So hi, everybody. Um, my name is Rachel Beglin, and I work for Four Directions Development. I'm actually the Farm Incubator Coordinator, but the Food is Medicine Workshop series was developed so that we could all have something to look forward to this winter and that we could take good care of ourselves during this pandemic and also going forward. I think um, creating our own medicines and knowing about our own medicines is a form of food sovereignty, right? Every time that you don't have to, um, every time you don't have to go to Walgreens to the pharmacy to buy something that somebody else produced, right? That's sovereignty. So um, today we are really blessed to be here with uh, Miss Esther Humphrey, who is, for lack of a better word, a badass, in my opinion. Uh, she's really cool and she's gonna teach us about, she also did the fire cider um, workshop for those of you who might have been part of that or wanna see it recorded, it's on YouTube. Um, so fire cider, and now we're going to do elderberry elixir. So we have lots of good ingredients here. For those of you who are from the area, um, looks like we may potentially have some leftover ingredients here at 40D. So if you wanted to make your own later, um, you could come by and get your elderberries or something. I think that could be a good alternative. Um, yeah, so feel free to do that. And then I'm just going to do a quick plug for the next food is medicine workshops um, because let's see, we have three more remaining for this winter because winter ends on, um, I think it's like March 20th is the last day of winter, which is crazy. Spring is coming everybody, spring is coming. Um, so the last three winter food is medicine workshops we have, we have this week on Wednesday, Jack DeJarle from Little Rock is gonna come and talk about some indigenous seeds and introduce you guys to the seeds that he carries, that he saves himself, um, some heirloom variety to some indigenous varieties really cool guy, very knowledgeable about seeds if you guys garden. Um, and then on, and that'll be at 10 a.m. on March 2nd. And then on March 7th, we have Linda Black Elk doing a chest bomb. So not really food, but still homemade medicine. Still, I think it still fits the, <laughs> fits the theme. That'll be Monday, March 7th at three. And then finally, we have um, Veronica Bratvold and she is awesome. She teaches food sovereignty at BSU. She lives here in Red Lake. She's doing blue corn muffins, which are gluten-free um, and berries. So kind of a fun one to end on. That'll be on March 13th. I think that's a Sunday as well at 1 p.m. And that's that. So let me see what time it is. Excuse me, it's 10, 12. Maybe we'll give it three more minutes and then I'll turn it over to Esther. I'll be following her around with this um, computer and recording her. And um, if any of you are in the area or wanna send someone over, we have materials here and we're at the office. So we would be happy to have anyone. Oh, we have someone from Southeast Kentucky here. Um, that's pretty exciting. That's pretty far. Um, no worries, Audrey, on muting yourself. Thanks for taking care of it. And yeah, January, I know you. You can come by anytime you want if you wanna come get some elderberries and the other stuff, cause I got all of these ingredients and I don't know if Esther's gonna say where she got hers too. The elderberries I got in two places. Um, this is from Sunrise Foods in Bemidji. Um, and these are from Harmony Foods. I don't know how the price is compared actually, cause I bought such different quantities, um, but these can be harvested from around here, I believe, or you can grow them. Um, and then we have, yeah, cinnamon sticks, licorice root, bunch of stuff. So be patient with me. Just give us a couple more minutes. I'm gonna go check the front and make sure nobody is lost and then we'll get started. For those who didn't hear, Esther is now smudging. <laughs> Oh, 
So there's nobody here in person. I don't know if it's just because of the day that we picked, but um, maybe somebody will show up and just whip some together because this stuff doesn't really take long at all. Um, the longest part of the process, I suppose, is boiling the elderberries and getting the juice out of them. Um, but there's some different things that you can do. So today we're gonna just make some regular old elderberry syrup, um, elixir, whatever you wanna call it. It's not really syrup, syrup, like when you think of syrup, it's it's just like an elixir. And then we're gonna make the oxymel, which is like a, a fermented type one. It has got apple cider vinegar in it, which is of course has really great healing properties itself. And then I just brought some, um, I make an elderberry tincture, has a little bit of nettle and um, cayenne and mullein and some other stuff in it, a um, couple drops every day. And then I also brought um, elderberry choke cherry um, fruit leather that I made in my dehydrator this summer just because I had um, lots of um, juice left and I didn't wanna, I was kind of sick of making elderberry syrup and stuff. So I decided, well, I'll mix it with some other juice I had in my refrigerator, which was um, choke cherry juice. Um, so I made um, some fruit leather, kind of, it's homemade. It's just wrapped in wax paper, nothing fancy. It's ripped really uneven. It's kind of ugly, but it tastes good. And so I brought samples for people who were here, but since nobody's here, I guess I'll eat it. <laughs> I have a, I have a question. Um, what, what is the elixir? Like, what are the benefits of using the elixir? Well, that's what we're going to make today. Um, mm -hmm. It's good for just boosting your immune system, you know, really strengthening it up. Um, it, and it's it's gentle enough so that you can just, you know, take a couple teaspoons or whatever, tablespoons every day, no matter if you're, you're sick or not, you know. Um, um, the Oxymel, if you don't like the apple cider vinegar taste, um, you can just like take a shot of it and put it in a glass of like really hot water and drink it like a tea. That's good too, because it's got cinnamon and stuff in it, you know, it's good. Um, and so I just use the same, the same liquid that I make for my elderberry elixir and pour it into my oxymel. So. Uh, okay. Um, another question is, um, so I have, you know, family that are diabetics, um, mm -hmm is what the elixir um, or the other oxymel, like how much sugars are in there? Would they, would it cause their, um, you know, sugars to spike really high or? Well, I suppose it depends how much you want, how much you use, right? And then what you use for a sweetener. You can use anything you want as a sweetener if you like the taste. I mean, I use honey. I like how honey tastes. I like the benefits of honey. I don't mix stuff with maple syrup. I mean, maybe I should because we have maple syrup and you know we harvest it and make it ourselves, but I really don't like the flavor of maple syrup with my elderberry. I don't like the flavor of a maple syrup like with a lot of things. I just like it plain. Um, honey as well, you know, honey has a lot of good health benefits to it. Our bees, you know, our bees are really good little caretakers of us. They know what we need, you know, so if you can use you know, as local of a honey as you can find, the better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's really awesome. So, like, really, I could um, would Splenda be even an option to sure. mix in? Try that. Yeah, try it. Mix it up. See how much you might not need very much. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. You know. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks. Try it. Try it. See what works. Um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not diabetic. I don't. I don't know. Um. I like stevia better than like the other artificial sweeteners. Because stevia, is, stevia is not really an artificial sweetener. It's, it's a real thing, I right? I grow stevia. Yeah, yes. a lot of people will grow stevia in just little pots and put like it grows to like little grass and lay it in your tea cup or whatever when you're having tea and it does. Yeah. Yeah, growing stevia. Yeah, that's what they really, that's what my um, family members like using stevia. Me too. Um, mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this fruit leather is really good. Um, it's like I said, um, everything, the base of pretty much everything is what we're going to make here today. 
and I'll just do a little example of it. So, so I got two pots of water boiling. Um, what are these like, like two quarts? Yeah, probably. So both these kettles are about two quarts and I just filled them up halfway with water. So like about a quart of water. And then I'm gonna add like a cup of elderberries to each of them. Um, one of the kettles will be for, um, you know, mixing the cinnamon and the ginger and stuff that we do for the elixir. And the other one's just going to be for the oxymel. And um, like Rachel said, you know, if any of you are local, um, there'll be some bottles of it here and um, extra supplies, I suppose, if you're going to come and make some at another time. Um, but we'll focus on the um, elixir today and do a little... Um, a little quick um, thing of the oxymel because the oxymel is super easy, super easy. Okay, it's just equal parts of elderberry juice, apple cider vinegar, and then honey or stevia or whatever sweetener you're going to use to make it taste good to you. Okay, that's it. That's it. And it's got a very long shelf life because of the apple cider vinegar. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I can pick up the computer and you can walk around or I can yeah. go Oh yeah. Okay. So Rachel's going to take you on a tour. Okay, guys, come with me. <laughs> okay. So um, I feel like most people have access to a stove, but also these little um, heaters are really nice. And we just have water boiling and you can kind of see how much there. It's about half of a small pot, um, maybe a quart or so of water. Um, and that's boiling over here. And then we're also boiling over here um, because we want those to be separate, like um, Esther was saying. So you'd want to have two pots going at the same time. And I also just wanna show you that she brought so much beautiful stuff and I'm sure she's gonna show us what it all is very soon. Um, and she's also smudging, which I think is an important detail to note that all of this medicine is being made. Are you smudging, is that sage? Uh, it's sage and a little bit of um, seven pines in it. Okay, so. Protection medicine. Yeah, so I just feel like it's always good to know that you're making the medicine in a good way and in a good space. And yeah. Yeah. so this, this um, what I brought here is, um, you won't be able to see it, but you can smell it. This is elderberry and black pepper seeds. Black pepper is really good for your blood. Um, I douse all of my food with pepper because I love pepper and I hate salt. But um, so you can leave them whole Okay, if you're gonna boil them, you can leave your berries and your peppercorns whole. Sometimes if you um, like are going to infuse your seeds in like oil or something, you can put them like in a coffee grinder or mush them up just a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit and um, use them that way. Cause then you get more of the, you know, they're easier to boil and diffuse throughout your liquid that way. But we're just gonna use them whole. So um, again, if you wanted to add a little bit of black peppercorn to your elderberries, you for sure can do that. I like to do it. Plus it gives it a little bit of kick, right? I like heat, so. Okay. So I'm gonna put some of the elderberries in the kettles. It is yeah. boiling. It just, yeah, it doesn't look like it as much. So this is about a cup, I don't know. I can get a measuring cup if you'd like. This will do. This will, this will be good. So the elderberries go straight into the water for those of you who might not. I don't know how good the camera is. I think you guys can see pretty well, though. Those are the peppercorns, yep. Oh, these are peppercorns. Yes, okay. here's more elderberry. Okay. <laughs> I know they look the same. Careful not to mix your peppers and elderberries. Do you, um, do you want to put some peppercorn in the elderberry or not? I think so. Okay. I think so. I think it's pretty good. So I just eyeball everything. I'm, I'm not very like perfect at measuring. And like I said, you know, um, you're going to get everything out of these elderberries the longer you boil them anyway so it doesn't matter you know how much water and how much elderberry you have it matters how long you boil them and how much how much of the stuff you're pulling out of it 
So we'll put a little bit of the black pepper, peppercorns into the elderberries that we're gonna use for the elixirs. And you probably only need about half of the amount of black pepper that you use for the elderberry. I've never seen someone boil peppercorns before. <laughs> Yeah. And um, Esther contacted me before this too, and there's some like different optional things. So we have ginger root, we have licorice root, we have rose hips. Um, you know, you can kind of make this as, as fancy um, and as local or as simple and as, you know, store-bought as you need to and fit your, fit your needs. Yeah, you can even, you know, we have a lot of wild mint growing around here. You can add mint to it. Um, the rose hips, of course, are another really good supplement for vitamin C. They're really high in vitamin C. And the licorice root is a really good um, soother. Like if you have a cough or a really irritated uh, nose, nasal passage, and sore throat, the licorice root is a really good soother. Okay, it just makes everything real slickery and feels good. And I put, I put um, licorice root in my my tincture Oops. and my cough syrups that I make too, just because of the Bennett, the, you know, how good they feel. Yeah, I just wanna lift up, someone put in the chat that agave is another sweetener that yeah. you can use. Yep, yeah, you could. Do you have a grinder or a, a anything? To, mm -hmm. Just to mash up, even just a hammer or a, put these in a I'll little find, cloth and pound yeah, them. Yeah, I can, I'll do something creative in the kitchen. <laughs> I know it doesn't have to be done any certain way, just how, whatever works, whatever works. Um, so we're just gonna uh, let these boil for a while. See the pot's boiling. And then um, we're gonna strain the elderberries out of the water. Um, we're not gonna have them like boiling, boiling too vigorously here. We're just more or less gonna let them boil just a little bit and then steep. Right, we want them to steep and get everything out of there. Um, and then I'm gonna, so I better turn this one down too. Um, so yeah, again, if you, if you want to, so the, the regular old elderberry syrup thing that we're making today is just gonna have the, the cinnamon, the ginger, um, some rose hip um, licorice root in it after we boil the berries for a while. If you like that base, cause it, it tastes good. I, I like it, it tastes good. If you like that base, you can use that same base for your oxymel mixture if you want to. Um, or you could just do the regular old flat plain elderberry juice and the apple cider vinegar and the sweetener to taste. We might have a strainer. I just want to show you guys that in the meantime, um, Esther did cut up ginger root. So I incorrectly purchased um, powdered ginger, which sometimes is like more accessible. Um, but Esther was saying it was going to be really hard to strain this out so you could use it but it would be more difficult so you're better off getting ginger at the store um and thank you dave um yeah i i appreciate that um and esther's looking for a cheesecloth so that we can strain everything out and i also wanted to show you guys so the rose hips are best off um crushed instead of whole I think it's just, you know, you increase the surface area when you do that. And we don't have a mortar and pestle here. So we just got creative. I'm using the bottom end of a whisk in a, in a bowl and crushing those. So you don't have to have all of the tech all of the time. Um, and Esther just found a really great strainer. Actually, I didn't even know we had that. This will actually mush a little bit of it out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do our jellies and stuff. Yeah. The elderberry also smells really good and really strong right now. So what's in there right now? Just the elderberries? In Just the... the elderberry is boiling. 
And then after we strain it, and it's just the elderberry juice, then we'll add the ginger and cinnamon sticks and the rose hip. Um, and then after that steeps for a while, then we'll, um, we're gonna use honey in this batch. So, Do you want to leave some without honey in case people come to? We could do that. To pick some up. Yeah. Um, January, you might know a little bit more about like how diabetes and honey work. Would it be beneficial for us to leave some batches without any honey in them? With no sweetener. Um. Uh, yeah, I know honey would make um my um my my parents or my dad's sugar spike. Um, it would be nice if there's some without, and then I could just sweeten it on my own. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Some empty, some plain batches, some plain bottles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I have a weird question for you guys, but there was somebody in the waiting room and I just want to make sure they're legit. It was a Pamela before I admit anybody, <laughs> Pamela Johns. I don't know if anyone noticed anything problematic from. She was here from the beginning. Um, okay. You doll that um that doll the last name doll but pamela was here some of the beginning the beginning and i think john's is actually a red lake last name, yeah, name. I, I just got i just got nervous but i don't see them in the waiting room anymore actually somehow they're gone so i'll wait and see if they want to rejoin yeah i'm gonna go finish those rose hips you don't have to crush them up too much because like we're straining through this if we don't have we don't have cheesecloth to catch everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so we're also just gonna use um ginger root, you know, sliced up ginger root instead of the ginger powder, just because the powder will strain through this and then you'll have like you know floaties and stuff in your stuff, which is it's still good. I mean, you know, if all you have is spices and powders in your medicine cabinet or your spice rack, use them, you know, but we're just gonna use these today. Yeah, the same probably goes for the cinnamon, I would guess then, mm -hmm. right? That's why you don't wanna use powdered cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I mean, if you're gonna use like a, I don't know, you could put them in a tea bag. If you don't have like a strainer or something, put your spices in a tea bag and then put the tea bag in your elderberry. You could do that too. That's smart, yeah. yeah just whatever you come up with there's there's no like one way of doing this you know we just we got to figure it out if we want to do it make it happen they always say work smarter not harder right so work smarter okay this is really an obnoxious interruption but what did we think of nicole cash <laughs> did we she was a real person and i think um she, well, I don't know. She didn't say anything. She was just watching. She was, yeah, she was from the beginning too. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. I'm just going to keep using your guys' knowledge because I wasn't always able to pay perfect attention. Yay. Is her name January? Yes. Or she might have, you might have to hire her to be security. Yeah. January, you're our new security team. <laughs> so we're going to get you all dressed up and we're going to put you in front of every Zoom meeting we ever do. <laughs> We get a badge me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So how long okay. do you want this to boil for generally? What's a good rule of thumb? So um I usually you know I'll I'll let it boil pretty vigorously just for a few minutes and then I'll turn it down and just let it steep until the berries get nice and mushy, right? And you can already see if we had, if I had a spoon, I could pull some up, but you can even see on the knife, it's getting nice and dark. You know, it's already, the juice is already getting really, really dark. So you just want to pull as much out of there as you can. Can you eat elderberries like off a bush? Um, oh no, no, you can't, you can't. No, you can't eat them. I actually know a woman whose cookbook it. got like retracted for saying that to eat them right off the bush uh-huh or she didn't cook them or did something undercooked so yeah elderberries are food but you can't eat them without cooking them important note i didn't i didn't yeah. know that yeah and i don't know if they grow i like 
Well, I know that people have said that there's elderberry trees around the area, but I don't know if we have a long enough season actually for like berry berries like this. Mm -hmm. We might have some a little bit. I don't know where. I've never seen a wild elderberry bush, but I did just recently find a wild hawthorn tree oh. out in the woods in my, in my adventures. And I didn't even know it was a hawthorn tree. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about hazelnuts recently too. Oh, are all over. Yeah. Does anyone know? We can put that to the group. Has anyone ever foraged elderberries before? Around here? January shaking her head now. You can always put things in the chat too. No need to uh, whatever you guys feel more comfortable with. I, I I do kind of want to ask like uh, I know you I remember you mentioning mint wild mint being around here where do we find that um you can find it a lot of times like in like uh fields like pastures you know open areas where there's not a whole lot of tree cover mm -hmm. um and like um just like if raspberries where raspberries are growing you know kind of around those areas um just like I always say you know pay attention to when you cut grass when you're cutting your grass you can smell it you know if you cut wild mint or if you cut sweet grass or something you can smell it for sure okay so pay attention to pay attention to what you're cutting um, um Hyssop, you could use hyssop leaves as well and, and buds of hyssop. I, I did bring a jar of hyssop mm -hmm. um, in case anybody wanted to try a batch with hyssop because that's a really nice, um, smooth, licorice type uh -huh. flavor too. Um, plus it's a good, uh, it fights infection good too. So hmm. you could make even like a, a poultice of that. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Um, and I've heard a lot, like if you're going out for the very first time, you know, to bring somebody who knows what they're doing with like the foraging, you know, um, sometimes you can go out by yourself and wing it, but sometimes it's a little safer to, you know, ask an elder and, you know, bring your tobacco and say, okay, can you please show me where you get your sage, where you get your mint, where you get, you know, um, you go and get lost somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so you don't get lost. So you know what you're looking for. And sometimes you know there's like similar plants too, plants that kind of look like other plants. And I don't know. That's what I've been taught is to uh, to go with somebody else, and then and then when you have that knowledge, pass that on. Um, yeah. And Nicole is asking, how about star anise? Yeah, anise? you could use star anise if you want to. Mm -hmm. That's a good a good flavor too. Yeah. Um, you can put, um, anything really that you like, you know, um, like I don't always put rose hips in my elderberry. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, I'd rather just have rose hip just plain by itself. Um, what other things have I made with elderberry? Um, I did a tincture with elderberry and clove and nettle. Um, Do you want to explain like what a tincture is and how it's different from other medicines? Sure. sure. So, so a tincture is just like if you're like, I don't use alcohol for my tinctures. I use vegetable glycerin. I don't use alcohol, um, although I have before. Um, so it's just, it's just a really strong infusion. So like if I'm, I just put like a jar, like if I had a jar, I would fill it like halfway full of whatever medicines I was gonna um, use, right? I would just fill it like, like halfway up with everything, pack it in there nice and good, everything that I'm putting in there and then fill it up the rest of the way with my vegetable glycerin, or if you, you're gonna use like a brandy or a blackberry brandy or vodka or whatever, you know, some people still use alcohol. Um, 
then you'll fill it up the rest of the way and you'll just shake it up, put it somewhere dark and let it sit for a while. Okay, and then and that's how you then you're going to strain it and then you'll have your tincture. You're you're just going to take a couple drops every day. Okay, so like like this. So this this is my little tincture. It's just a little tiny four ounce bottle, and it lasts me probably about a month because it's just like a couple drops every day when I walk by it in the morning. You know, it's just a little dropper. So, and then um. You always want to take your tinctures under your tongue. It reaches your system a lot faster if you put it under your tongue and just hold it there for a while. You don't got to wait till it burns or nothing, but just, you know, hold it there for a little bit and then swallow it. Don't chase it with anything because then you, you know, you want it to be, give it, take it in its full effect, right? So. So does that mean it, it enters in the body through like the tongue and the bloodstream that way? Yeah, faster. You know how, like, if when people have those little tiny, what are they, nitroglycerin tablets oh, or something, like yeah. when they're having like, like heart attacks or mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm. that, they put those little white pills under their tongue mm -hmm. because it reaches their system, their blood fast, faster. It dissolves faster. It reaches it, your system. So cool. Faster. Thank yeah. you for sharing with, with us. Like, I'm learning so much today. Yeah. Thank yeah. And so, um, so the tincture is just a really, really strong um, mixture. It's not an elixir. It's not um, like there's no water in it to water it down or make it weak. It's like, that's why you only need a couple drops because it's so strong. Can you do a tincture with dry ingredients? Or yeah. do they have to be wet ingredients? No, yeah. you can do it with dry. Um, so, um, if anyone is interested in, in making some of those things, I know that Harmony Foods, at least, sells these little bottles, you know, little empty ones. Um, or you could reuse one if you have one. But if you don't have one to start with and you're interested in making that, I know that Harmony sells those little things. Yeah, and, and if you're going to do tinctures, you don't have to have the little bottles. Just get the droplets, the droppers, you know. And you can even save your baby's Tylenol drop things, right? And then just keep whatever mm -hmm. in a little jar and keep the little dropper by the jar where it's at you know you don't got to get all fancy just use what you got right that's what we got to do so this was a tincture it's just in a little plain old jar don't have a dropper um and this one has clove and cinnamon borage ginger root juniper berry and nettle so this is really good stuff for um Hmm. Blood. Um, respiratory. This would be really good, like if you have like arthritic pain. Um, yeah. So does that like mean it helps with like inflammation and stuff? Yeah, it's a good anti-inflammatory. Um, the borage especially. I think the borage is really good for it. Um, yeah. And like, um, so a few weeks back, I was kind of like on this, this kick of going through my spice rack and my medicine cabinet and stuff. And I was just reading a bunch of stuff about different spices I had in my medicine, my spice rack. I don't even know why I have, you know, um, what is it, Majoram or whatever oh, on yeah. my, my, spas, my spice rack because I don't even remember using it. You know, I maybe bought it in a little thing just because I needed it in a recipe and then I never used it again. It got shoved way in the back. I never knew it was there. But I started pulling out my spices and reading about, you know, everything. And turns out the spices and everything we're eating has their own medicinal values, right? And so <clears throat> I made myself up a little tea it had all kinds of spices in it and I don't even have the list on me, but I keep it in my medicine cabinet just so I know what all them spices are good for oh, and what's in my idea. little tea bags. So I kept track of um, my sleep pattern, um, like my, my hunger cravings, you know, when I wanted a snack, um, when, what my energy levels were, you know, for probably about two weeks after drinking this tea every night, just one cup every night. And I swear within about three days, 
my sleeping was like nice and full and deep. I was sleeping good. I was going to bed early. I wasn't like up all night long watching TV, snacking, you know. Um, I went to bed at a decent hour. I got up feeling really good, you know, ready to ready to get going. No dragon. And I think it was because of the tea. And it's just stuff I pulled out of my spice cabinet. So it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. We didn't need to go to the hospital and get these vitamins or anything. It was just right in our spice rack. Yeah. I think something that people that I used to think when I was younger, especially when I was like a student and I was like, I am broke and I am not going to spend, like, I'm not fancy. Like, I don't need to put anything on my eggs. I don't need you know, and I didn't really think, like, I used to think spice was just, like, what fancy people put on fancy food, you know, like, it was just about flavor, and I was not a flavor person, I was not a foodie, and so I just thought that wasn't for me, you know, I'll just eat plain beans and rice, I don't need to put anything on anything, I, that was, like, what I did, I still sometimes do that, it's not good, but I think like a big transformation for me, like Esther's talking about, is like you don't put spices on your food just to like be fancy with flavor. We're straining the elderberries now for yep. you guys to see. I'm just gonna pull them out. Yeah, spices are for everybody and spices are medicine and they're not just for people who like watch the Food Channel all day long and are obsessed with cooking. They're for everybody. Okay, so after this strains, I'm gonna go and um, clean out this kettle so we can put the liquid back into the kettle and then we'll start mixing everything in. Okay, okay I'll show them this real quick. So some kind of, um, up to you guys, some kind of strainer. We happen to have this one. It's for making jellies here in our commercial kitchen, which everyone should know is open to the public. Anytime you guys need a commercial kitchen, even if you are just, I don't know, we've had people use it for powwows. We've had people use it for food sales. We've had people use it just for their own, you know, you got 20 people coming over and it's somebody's birthday. Our commercial kitchen is available and it's really cool. January, I see you speaking, but I think you're muted. I said that's sweet. I was like, I remember um you was, you mentioning that last time at I, I was up there with, I think that was uh, blueberry cough syrup. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I I didn't get to um, I still didn't get to make those um, candy, but I was able to put candy bags together for oh. Valentine's. But I still would like to do that for them. Um, Make some maple syrup candy for the um, elderly over at JPEG. We are waiting for you. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got the juice back on the burner and it's just the juice. Yep, it's just the juice. It's nice and hot. I'm going to put in, this is probably about like this chunk of ginger root was probably about a good, like almost the size of my hand. And I just cut it up into long slivers, nothing, you know, thin. Skin is still on it, no matter. And I'm just gonna throw it in here. There. And then we got, oh, uh, probably, a, we're just gonna use all this. Do you wanna use all this or you wanna Go save it? Go for it. No. You wanna save some? I have so much at home. Okay. Go for it. So this is probably about, a cup of rose hips. We're just gonna throw it all in there, okay? It's up to you if you wanna use that much or not. It's up to you if you wanna even use rose hips. You don't have to, okay? You don't have to. Rose hips are an easy one though. For those um, new to foraging, I think rose hips are one of the easiest, um, most identifiable um, things to harvest. I grabbed a bunch from um, right behind Oshki Majitata here in Red Lake. That was just growing. It was like literally stuck in the fence and I was pulling them off. So you wait, um, well, you can get them fresh or you can wait till they dry on the bush. Um, but they're they're like natural roses, like yeah. native roses, I guess is the way Wild to say. roses, yeah. And Wild right roses. next to Oshkima Jitata too, that empty lot, 
across from the sheds and the garages. There's a whole bunch there. There's also a bunch on the, uh, that, what do you guys call it? Back of town road over by the elementary school. That whole strip on the right side in front of the elementary school is rose hips galore. Okay. What, what, what um, like medicinal properties do rose hips add? Would, would they add into the elixir? Or is it like more of a flavor? Oh, it's both. I love rose hips. I love the flavor of rose hips, but they're really, really high in vitamin C. Really high. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. When I was a little tiny girl, my mom said that I used to go out and pick my own rose hips so I could have tea. And I had my own little container of rose hips so I could have tea. Um, so we're going to put probably about three three sticks of cinnamon in here because the cinnamon is pretty strong stuff and it can be really overpowering sometimes. So we're going to put about three sticks of that in there and we are going to put a couple pinches of licorice root. So this is a licorice root. You can see it. I'm gonna put that in there. Again, you don't need a whole lot because it's pretty strong stuff. I did bring his up, but I'm not gonna put his up in this batch. Um, you can even put like, uh, gosh, I don't know. You, if, you can put anything in it really. It's all up to you how you wanna change it up, beef it up for yourself. The things that you like. Is there anything that's a no-no? Like, don't put this in. Probably not, but maybe. Yeah. I have yet to make elderberry syrup with cayenne. I like hot stuff. I really like heat. So I was thinking about making a batch with like some cayenne or some chilies or something to give it some some heat just to like clear as a, clear you out, right? So this just needs to steep with everything, you know, about maybe 20 minutes or so. And then again, you're gonna strain it, okay? And this will be your final straining before you add whatever sweetener you're gonna add to it, okay? Um, yeah, if you want to boil it way down, you can do that. Um, would that make like a jelly? If you add like with the honey, mm. if you put your honey in there, you could, you could boil it down. You can make elderberry jam and jelly and stuff like that too. You know, just use your base as, you know your juice that you're starting out with, with your jam and then just put your pectin and sugars and you don't have to put all kinds of sugar in it you know make it to taste you could add a little bit of cinnamon to it um but you don't want to boil the heck out of it because then you boil all the good stuff the good properties and stuff out of it too if you boil it too much so that's why we're more or less just kind of steeping this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what sharon nordrum also said when she was here, for those of you who might have been there, um, to be careful not to boil out your medicines. When things get too hot, um, the proteins unravel and different other chem, I don't know, chemistry, I'm not a chemist, but things, things don't always stand up to the heat. I know that. Yeah. So a good thing I always look for is when I'm watching my cinnamon sticks, once they start to unravel, I'll take them out. Okay. So um, like one of them is starting to unravel. Actually, I think there may have been one stuck inside of that one <laughs> and it came out. So now we have four cinnamon sticks here. Woo! Yeah, I'm just going to get it right because the elderberry juice does thing. Oh, that's good. Okay. Also, I don't know if you guys all know this, but I'm starting to see this become like really trendy and like a lot of companies are also starting to sell elderberry elixir. So most of me is like 
don't don't be fooled you can make this yourself don't don't start following these like health food companies that I don't know this is my hot take this is not 4DD <laughs> speaking this is just me um but I think there's a lot of power in doing it yourself and having control over all of these ingredients and like knowing your body knowing how much cinnamon you like you know all like what January brought up which was such a great point like making sure it's like um okay for those with diabetes and you don't need to go to Whole Foods to get elderberry elixir. You just don't. Just throwing that out there. Nothing against Whole Foods, those, but. Those companies are all about preservation, keeping it on the shelf as long as they can to make their money. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what else they're putting it into, even if they are selling it at a Whole Foods store. Mm -hmm. But you know what you're putting into it when you make it. Yeah. And I think there's something else to be said about, like, when you make it yourself, like, some part of the medicine is foraging, right? Like it's not just the, the rose hips that have medicine. It's also the fresh air, it's walking, it's knowing your plant relatives. Like that's a healing process in itself. Like, I don't know the joy of recognizing a plant when you're out walking and like feeling like you're in a place that you know, that's really powerful too. So the whole process is important. I'm just, I'm just filling time, you guys. I love stalling. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't know, I don't know how many people, you know, pay attention to like traditional type teachings and stuff, but there's a lot more to it. You don't just go out and say, oh, I'm going to pick these rose hips, boy, I'm taking them. Oh, I'm going to make some medicine, boy. Oh, the rose hips is going to make me healthy. Well, no, it's not because it's just a plant, right? There's things that you have to do when you're making those offerings, when you're, when you're gathering those, those relatives, you need to do things for them too, right? Before and after, right? So you want to, you know ask somebody for those things too. So you got going out there and do it <clears throat> and foraging and picking things for medicine. Mm -hmm. Just like when you smudge, right? You can smudge, you can light some sage and wave it around, but what are you really doing, right? What's that really doing? You know, you have to have some intentions with that stuff. This is looking really good, you guys. Looking really good. The rose hips are getting nice and puffy, so you know that they're extracting, if the water's extracting all that good stuff out of the rose hips. The cinnamon sticks are opening up. The ginger's turning dark the color of the elderberry. Yep. And it's not boiling at all, you'll notice. Now it's on pretty low setting. Yeah, do you want um like a ladle instead of the knife? <laughs> like a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a spoon. Okay. One second, everybody. I'm just gonna leave you with the egg. I'm going to now, I think I'll leave the, the elderberry that we have for the um, oxymel with the vinegar. I'm, I'm going to leave that boiling or steeping longer than this stuff just because we really want to pull everything out of this batch. So for the oxymel too, we'll want to, um, you know, let that elderberry liquid cool off before we add the apple cider vinegar to it. Okay. So after we strain it, we'll just let it sit for a little bit, cool off a little bit like room temperature or something, just so it's not so hot. And then we'll add the, we'll measure it and then add the same amount of apple cider vinegar to it. And then um, add the honey to it and leave a, maybe a bottle or two, mm -hmm. just plain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, for those of you wondering about stevia, um, I took like a total, went on a whim, bought a packet of stevia from Johnny Seeds. I think it was like $3, you know, it like seeds are not that expensive. I 
started them and I have them all growing indoors. So it's not, you know, I don't have a garden. I live in an apartment. I don't, <laughs> I don't have them growing outside. I just have them in pots. Um, they're pretty long. They're kind of spindly. They grow these little leaves and I don't know that much about processing them yet. Like I know I can boil them in a tea and make the tea sweet. I don't know if you can actually eat the leaf. So I strain out the leaf. So I don't know. You might be able to just munch on them potentially, but they're so sweet. Um, cool. So we could like actually boil the leaves in our elixirs and it would add sweetness that way. Yeah. 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 Um, a lady I know who grows it, she's, that's what she does. She just picks it off her little windowsill planters as she needs to sweeten her tea and stuff. And she'll just put, she'll just put it right in her cup. Yeah. So talk about natural. Cause I'm sure Stevia, I, I agree with Esther that Stevia is better than Splenda, but I am pretty blind. Like I don't, I don't know how they process it. I don't know what happens in that moment. I don't know how sustainable it is. I can't really comment on that, but Growing it myself is really easy. So I don't know, it's just an idea. Keep you guys thinking. I had a friend once who was working with a diabetic community and worked on getting everybody um, seeds for, for Stevia. I don't know how it all shook out at the end, but I know that was a project that somebody was working on. I'm just pulling the cinnamon sticks out of here. I think they've been in there long enough. Oh, like I said, they're kind of breaking up in there, so. And elderberry just does stain, so you can see it there. Oh yeah, thank you for wiping that up, I appreciate it. <laughs> Might need to bleach it. We could also take like the five minute break if you want, if you think that. It's going to steep for a while. Yeah, it's going to steep for a little bit longer. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll take five, everybody. If anyone needs to like get a drink, go to the restroom. I'm just going to put this on um, on mute because um, the, the elixir is just going to steep for like a few more minutes. So we'll give everyone a chance to do that without missing any critical information. And we'll be back in five. So at 11.20. Think of questions while you're gone.
Okay, we back, we back. So we did strain out the um, elderberry for the oxymel. We're just gonna let that cool off for a little bit and then measure it and get it bottled up for you. Um, and do you wanna explain to them why it has to cool off? Yeah, so we, we want it to cool off just because this is going to be um, the thing that we use for the oxymel with the apple cider vinegar. And we don't want that apple cider vinegar. Um, the heat will like kill the mother. So you, when you buy apple cider vinegar, you want to buy the raw, the good stuff with the mother. And it usually labels it right on there. You can also tell because it's got that foggy film on the bottom. It's not clear, you know, it's not an amber color, it's it's foggy. So, you know, it's the real stuff. Um, For those of you guys who might not know that much about fermentation yet, um, the mother is, it's like, it's a probiotic. It's bacteria, it's yeast, it's alive. It's good bacteria, <laughs> yes. Not just any bacteria, good bacteria. It's the same stuff that's in kombucha um, or similar stuff, I should say that's in kombucha and it's because it's alive. If you were to put the apple cider vinegar directly into this like really hot boiling uh, juice, you would kill all that bacteria. And that's what makes apple cider vinegar so good for you and why people say to drink it every day and blah, blah, blah. So you definitely wanna make sure that you are buying, cause I will show you, I bought the wrong one. <laughs> I bought the wrong one. What was that? Oh yeah, okay, I guess I didn't buy like, it's not like a useless one, but the one that we have on hand is, oh, I'm like in our kitchen stuff, um, is this stuff, which also calls itself apple cider vinegar, but it is good for preserving food if you do pickling, but it's not as good for medicine because it doesn't have the probiotic bacteria that goes into your gut, and makes your gut really happy, so. If you're buying it for making pickles, whatever apple cider vinegar you find at the store is fine. If you're buying it for the probiotic and the medicine, you want with mother. And like she said, there's like a kind of gross looking, I'm not gonna lie, film at the bottom, like a white film. <laughs> um, I don't, it's not that gross, but. Well, I did bring some samples. So we'll have a, we'll have Rachel be the guinea pig and she can taste the oxymel <laughs> for us and tell you what she thinks. Ooh, this is spontaneous. I was not told ahead of time. <laughs> sample cups. Oh, nice. Well, just to taste it. This is just the regular. Oh, and that is like, like I said, the fighter cider too, you know, just putting like a shot in the cup of hot mm -hmm. water, like drinking as a tea, you can do it with that too. Yeah, but I'm gonna take it like a shot. <laughs> Oh, that's way better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's really that good. Bad? It's really it's good. Bad. I was afraid it was going to be vinegary, but it's not. Make you choke? Mm -hmm. Like swallow a whole bunch of times? Yeah. yeah. No, that's really good, actually. And this is just the plain, uh, no apple cider. That's just the plain oh. elixir. Okay. Now I'm trying the elixir, everybody. This is very exciting stuff. Oh, yeah. This is much... I feel like I can taste the peppercorns. I feel like I actually like the oxymel better than the elixir. Mm -hmm. They're good though. Yeah, they are. And then you can try the um, fruit leather. Okay. The elderberry choke cherry fruit leather. Wow. You guys saw this earlier, but she dehydrated the juice and turned it into fruit leather, which is a snack. Yeah. It's just like a fruit roll up, but not as pretty. Oh, it's chewy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. That tastes like fruit leather from the store. Yeah. It's good little road snacks when you're traveling and you don't want to stop, but you need a little something sweet. I feel like um, kids would really like it. Like, I feel like that's an easy way to get kids to, it tastes like, and feels like candy, but it's probably a lot better for you. Like a lot better yeah. for you. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good way to trick your children into getting healthy so like food. Like I've cherry and plum and you know stuff fruit leather and I it's never been so like well like you can see how liquidy and gooey it is right it's like that mm -hmm. I think it might be the elderberry that does it okay so it might be a different compound or something in it to 
that works so good yeah. yeah we also have a question here and that is from dave it's a really good question you probably already mentioned it but are we using fresh picked berries today or were they stored for later use yeah they were dried they were dried i did actually just go to i'll show you this too esther yeah dave where are you from have you ever harvested um elderberries yourself we're curious I'm finding something in my bag really quick. Here we go. I just came across these at a conference that I was at. Um, and these are for, I'm gonna go home and make some too. These are freeze dried elderberries. And I don't know, I've heard sometimes that freeze drying might be a way to preserve more nutrients. It's like, yeah. because if you pick at like peak freshness and then you freeze dry it, um, that goes for a lot of food. I was just talking to the nutritionist at the hospital here in Red Lake, and she was saying that anything frozen, like vegetables, is better for you than canned. Mm -hmm. I never had heard that before. So freeze dried kind of goes with that. I think January, you might want to say something, but you're muted. Okay. Um, oh, no, you're not. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so you guys used, um, what were they? Um, what were used in today's again? Today's uh, were dried. Okay, and then we could either use uh, freeze dried or fresh as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. I don't know. I've never seen fresh elderberries for sale. I don't know if Esther has. We can ask her in a second. I've only ever seen them dried, and they're in that section. If you go to like um like Harmony or Sunrise, it's like a section with all these little like glass jars um and you like scoop it as much as you want into a bag or whatever um have you ever seen fresh elderberries no i not around here i have never seen any like sold um no. but um yeah free, you were talking about freeze drying before i went in the kitchen and uh freeze drying is like a a really good way to preserve better than drying i mean they they last a lot longer like freeze dried food you can has a shelf life of like 20 years or so it's like a like a space food right yeah 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 um, and you can you can do anything you can freeze dry ice cream you can freeze dry spaghetti you can freeze dry chicken strips you can <laughs> freeze dry fruit you can freeze dry everything yeah and it looks the, it just looks the same but it, it you know, you have to reconstitute it with water when you're ready to eat it. I had freeze dried um, scalloped potatoes and ham one time as a sample somewhere. And they tasted just like scalloped potatoes and ham. Just <laughs> Um, and then Dave says he's from Louisville, Kentucky, and he has not harvested before, but he's growing a thicket hedge um, and wants to see his first berries this year. So I think just like any you know, because so we have the Red Lake Nation Foods um, company that is owned by the tribe does all their jelly processing in our commercial kitchen and they do all of that with like raw product so fresh fresh berries so if you do have access to fresh elderberries first of all freeze dry them and mail them to me and second of all um yeah you could definitely throw them directly into your boiling water that's how they make like blueberry cough syrup or blueberry jams and all kinds of stuff so fresh would work too and nicole is asking what was the ratio of water to dried berries i think it was like um, it's well, if you're gonna make a full batch, this is not a full batch because it's just us, but if you're gonna make a full batch, it's like four cups of water to two cups of berries. And but if you're gonna use black um, peppercorns or white peppercorns, whatever, with your berries, then you want to mix those together before you throw them in. Yep. So I guess it's about like a two to one ratio. Yeah. Double double the water that you do for the berries. Um yeah. But I guess that's also to taste, right? Like if you yeah. wanted it to be less strong, if you were giving, um, I don't know if, yeah, if you were giving it to kids who are like, oh, I'm sensitive or um, I don't know, just for whatever reason, you don't like the taste of elderberries. I feel like you could water it down or on the other side of that, make it super powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might want to drink less of it at that point. But if you were like, I hate elderberries and I just want it to take 
the tiniest amount and make it super strong, I suppose you could do that too. And Dave has promised me elderberries and I am taking that very seriously. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else we wanna show them or? Oh, shelf life. I feel like storage is a good thing to oh, mention. Oh, yeah, yeah. For um, just the regular elder elderberry elixir, like I was telling Rachel a minute ago, um, like I have a jar. It's in an amber, a dark color jar um, that I just mixed the elixir with no sweetener. And it's still in my refrigerator and I mixed it probably in September. And I haven't added the sweetener or anything to it because I don't really need it yet. I still have enough bottles and stuff at home that I don't need to pull out and mix it up. Um, it, it tastes fine. It still tastes fine. But with the apple cider vinegar, you know, because of the vinegar, it's, it, it has like, you can leave it out on your counter probably for a few months. It's, it's not going to bother it. It's not going to hurt it. Might, might get a little zingier, but I mean, that's what happens. Right? That's where the probiotic comes from. No. So elixir in your fridge, Oxymel on your counter. Yeah, it's and I don't know about freezing. Um, hmm. Like I always thought maybe trying um, sweetening up a batch of liquid and maybe putting some like in those little popsicle containers. Like my daughter really likes popsicles. Oh, that's cute. So I don't, I don't know, you know, our ice cube trays or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that might, I don't know how freezing would change it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's worth a shot, you know, I'll probably try it, maybe use it for some ice cubes or something like in a tea or whatever. It's a good idea. Yeah. Just any way I think to get it into, you know. Do you think you could can things. it? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Just like a probably like a water bath or something. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. I bet you. Mm -hmm. You'd want to do it probably like in small jars, you know, okay. maybe little jelly jam jars mm -hmm. you know, and, and water bath of so yeah. Mm. yeah so if you don't have a lot of refrigerator or freezer space which is me mm -hmm. um you could maybe make a big batch and then water bath can them so that's like the way we make pickles and stuff and salsa is you put everything in your jar and then you actually boil the jar itself um for like usually 10 minutes and then um the little lids pop and that means that they're sealed and that's another way to to preserve and then once yeah. it's canned it can sit on your shelf in a pantry or wherever yeah yeah that's a good idea yeah. i don't know yeah. worth a try can elderberry but yeah especially if you had a lot of it yeah if you like exactly. had a really good harvest or if you're dave and you're lucky enough to be growing it and yeah. you want it to last for a long time you could even probably just can the juice and then hold on to the juice and then cook with it you know make your make your stuff as you go if you want it just can the basic juice yeah. might work yeah. too oh, just thinking out loud mm -hmm. or if you make like a really strong batch so that one little jar equals you know mm. batches of elderberry or something if you add more water or whatever to it yeah almost make a concentrate yeah instead. that might be something to try so many ideas yeah January is playing with all of the features of Zoom. I really enjoyed that journey. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys could see that in real time. I was like, oh, look, she's in black and white. Oh, look, she's got a background. <laughs> um, I guess I don't want to keep anyone too long. I feel like that was like a lot of the knowledge. I don't know if everyone wants to stay so they can see it get strained um, or if there are more questions. I just want to be conscious of your time and appreciate you all being here. Um, and then for those of you who are in Red Lake um, or live close by, um, Esther and I talked about, I'm going to basically put all the ingredients into a jar and have those available here at the office for anyone to take home. And even though Esther here boiled the elderberries apart, you could boil it all together and then strain it all together and then um, have you know have your elderberry elixir so i just might make up the recipe for you and with all the dry ingredients yeah. in the jar with all the dry ingredients in the jar you take it home you boil it you make your medicine so um just feel free to message me on facebook or message me here in the chat privately or publicly um, if you wanted to pick up anything 
Okay, I just want to say thank you, Rachel, for putting this together, and thank you um, for sharing your knowledge with us, Esther. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what we're going to do is finish these batches. We're going to strain out the elixir with everything in it. Um, and then we'll, we'll put it in some bottles um, after we sweeten it. And then we'll leave a couple with no sweetener. And then um, that will be done. And then we'll just um, wait for this to cool. And then add the apple cider vinegar and the sweetener to it and jar it up. And, and that's it. Um, yeah, like I said, um, you know, use what you have on hand, you know, don't think you have to go out and buy a, you know, 16, $17 box of jars or anything, you know, just start saving your spaghetti jars, start saving your pickle jars, you know, start saving your jalapeno jars, whatever, you know, any glass container is good. I freeze things. I save my glass jars. I have them all over my garage <laughs> and I freeze stuff in my glass jars, even, you know, and, um, I, I, use them for dry storage and drinking out of and everything, you know? Um, so just use what you have on hand. You know, if you don't have a strainer, um, use a towel, you know, just use a towel, use what you got. You know, you don't need some high quality, high brand cheesecloth or anything like that, right? Just use what you have that's gonna strain the mixture that you're working with, you know? Um, yeah, use any old colander and, lay a towel in it and sift it through. Um, and Dave here has a question. Dave, feel free to unmute yourself if you wanna ask your question. Hey, did it work? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay, awesome. I don't understand these robot computer things. Hey, first of all, let me just say thank you so much for um, spending your time with us and giving us your energy today. I really appreciate it as I, as I try to learn more about this. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if in the link, uh, or I mean in the in the chat, if you'll post uh, uh, like a link or an email address or something, that way when I have my bountiful <laughs> elderberry harvest, I can make sure to be able to contact you, get the mailing address and send it to you. Sure, do you want me to put your email in the chat? Oh, sure, yeah, you, you put, Rachel, put my email in the chat and if anybody's on social media on Facebook or anything, just look me up. Um, I too, I do a lot of different classes and stuff over where I live and um, always, you know, willing to share. And um, I usually have like a little table and box of stuff that I'm making out in my, by my mailbox for anybody to pick up. I don't care. You know, everybody needs good medicine and good food. So there's no stipulations on who can pick it up unless you live in Louisiana, then don't bother coming over here. <laughs> too long of a drive. Um. Yeah, and I, I think it's, yeah, Esther is from Leech Lake. Yep. And I just wanted to put that out there. Um, that's where she works and does incredible work and yep. is from. And, yep. Yeah. And the same, like I said, with the spices, if you only have ground up cinnamon and ground up ginger, if that's all you can find or ground up pepper, put it in a tea bag. If you have a tea bag at home, you know, it's Lipton and you don't think you're going to use it, take the Lipton out and put your other stuff in the tea bag, you know, and, and use the spices that you have instead of the whole you know, yeah. the whole parts that we have. Mm -hmm. Just use what you have on hand. Experiment with different different things, you know. You're the one who's going to use it, so make it something that you like. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, so I will... for joining everybody and visiting. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Let me put Esther's email. It's Esther.Humphrey. Yeah. E S T H E R. Oh, I've emailed you a lot. I think I got it now. Humphrey.ltc.edu. <laughs> That's Esther's email there. That's the Leech Lake Tribal College. And then I will throw mine in there as well. And I'm really glad that everyone um, came back. And, and I appreciate all that patience too. Um, I think this session was like really successful. So thanks for sticking with it. Um, this was recorded. So I'll do a little bit of editing, which will be necessary. Um, and then I will be able to post this on YouTube so that you guys can have access again um, to this session. And our other teachings are on there too. We have outside bread, fire cider, um, which Esther did virtually as well. Um, blueberry cedar cough syrup, 
And I said at the beginning, the ones that are coming up. So if you go to our Facebook page, I'll type it in here. It's get a It means to make a garden. And that is where we post everything else. So miigwech and have a beautiful rest of your weekend, everyone.